Good morning to all of you. Myself, Indra Varao, Secretary IGS Kuntu Chapter. This is the 38th webinar of the IGS Kuntu Chapter. Organized by IGS Student Chapter, Marinelli Pirmaldi Education Society's Group of Institutions, Guntur, Andhra Pradesh. IGS Kuntu Chapter established in 2003. Organized in number of seminars, workshops. Significant being the IGC 2009 National Conference at RVR and GC College of Engineering Guntur. I am thankful to Dr. K.S. Dina, Professor and Dean, Dean Faculty of Engineering, Kuchin University of Science and Technology, Kuchin, Kerala, to deliver this webinar lecture, Application of Higher Geotextiles in, geo in Subgrades. Before introducing the speaker, few announcements to participants. I request all the participants to please stop your video. During the lecture, we are going to chat with the host only, that is myself. And you may chat audio and video issues only. Please do not share your information and the questions during the lecture. After completion of the lecture, I will share Google Form link. And its purpose is to sharing the PDF content of this lecture and your feedback. Questions answer session at the end of the lecture through chat. Our next webinar at 6 p.m. on Monday, that is 6th July, by Dr. Ashish T. Gurpuri, Managing Di Director, Gens True Consultants Private Limited, Pune. And the title of the webinar lecture is Improving Geotechnical Investigation Reliability by Logging Through Bore Log App. Now I will invite um, uh, Aparna Srivatsa, Assistant Professor and Advisor to IGS Student Chapter, Malayalam Permalo Educational Society, to introduce this speaker. Aparna, Thank please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good morning, one and all. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. M. Ramarao Garu to giving me this wonderful opportunity to introduce Encyclopedia of Coir Geotextiles. Professor K.S. Bina, Dean and Syndicate Member, Professor of Civil Engineering, Kochi University of Science and Technology, Kochi. She graduated in Civil Engineering from College of Engineering, Trivandrum in 1984 and continued her post-graduation there in Geotechnical Engineering and secured the M.Tech degree in 1986. She submitted her doctoral thesis in 1993 and obtained her Ph.D. degree from Indian Institute of Technology, Madras with Android Fellowship completed the postdoctoral fellowship from University of Wollong, Australia in, 19, in 2015. She has an experience of more than 30 years in teaching, research and design. Before going to CUSAT in 1999, she was working as an assistant professor in Kerala Agricultural University during 1988 to 1993. And after that, worked as an assistant director in Kerala State Irrigation Department. Her research interests are geosynthesis, finite element modeling, natural geotextiles, pavement studies using coir geotextiles, landslides, mitigation, geoenvironmental studies, liquefaction studies, transport geotech, laboratory modeling, etc. She had been geotechnical engineering consultant to various organizations like coir board, Coir FED, Kerala State Land Development Corporation, Water Authority, Cochin Corporation, Indian Railways, Cochin International Airport, etc. She produced seven PhDs and eight scholars are working under her guidance. She has completed three sponsored projects and in which two are Coir Geotextiles. She has written three books. More than 40 papers are there in her credit in national and international journals and conferences. She is also a governing body member of National Coir Research Management Institute of Government of Kerala. She is a fellow member of Institution of Engineers and life member of ISPE, Indian Geotechnical Society and Indian Road Congress. She has been selected for the prestigious Individual Research Fellowship Award in 2015 by Government of Australia and in 2017 selected as one of the Australian Awards Ambassador for the Australian High Commission. Thank you, ma'am, for sparing your valuable time to enlighten budding engineers like me 
to get the knowledge on applications of coir geotextiles in subgrades from your words i would like to hand over the session to beena ma'am hello am i audible yes ma'am okay very good morning to all of you and uh, once again warm welcome to this program i am privileged to be here as a part of this uh, program uh, so thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity on the outset i wish to congratulate the organizers especially dr ram rao and his team for superbly conducting this show that is for nearly more than 40 episodes we have planned i think and very well done with eminent personalities of national and international reputation uh, that so thank you so much for giving me this for giving me also this opportunity now moving to the presentation i i was asked to present on application of coir geotextiles in subgrade so moving on to the presentation the problems associated with coir geotextiles Madam, can you use a spotlight? Madam, yes, can you use spotlight? That's right. That's right. Annotate. Click the first spotlight. Annotate. Click the annotate. Please click the annotate. Adjacent to more annotate is there. In the annotate, the spotlight. No, no, it is not. First, annotate it, madam, in the Zoom bar, not in the PowerPoint. No, I am not getting the Zoom bar here. Zoom bar, you can keep your mouse uh, nearer to your screen sharing. Uh, green bar will be there. Keep your mouse very nearer to that. Are you getting, madam? Ah, now it is working. It is spotlight is there. Ah, okay. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, now moving on to the. Yes. 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 Yes.
these conditions we can uh, deal it either during the construction or during the maintenance now coming to uh, what are the problems associated with us mainly the temporary roads subjected to low volume of traffic are often constructed without asphalt or cement concrete surfacing a layer of aggregate is placed on the prepared subgrade of those roads to improve their road carrying capacity now under the pressure under the pressure of uh, this uh, aggregate the bottom gets loosened resulting in cracks this allow also allows the under underlying fines under pressure to migrate up into the aggregate and stone to stone contact is destroyed fines migrate further upwards and the section deteriorates until complete structural section fails structural failure occurs about 10 to 20 percentage fines can completely destroy the structural strength of the aggregate this process can quickly destroy the effectiveness of several inches of aggregate the contamination of the base coast layer causes the reduction of strength stiffness and drainage characteristics the, the performance of that it affect the performance of the drainage characteristics the problems are usually encountered when the separate consists of salt clays sills and organic soils this type of subgrade is unable to support the traffic and must be improved so the problems associated with our we can say low bearing capacity high settlement high seepage loss and liquefaction during earthquake etc now the scarcity of land what are the things we we uh, consider uh, while selecting or constructing a road the main thing is the alignment when you consider the alignment the scarcity of the land limits the choice of land itself the roads and the environments have to build on peat soils soil deposits which are available and also we know that transportation is the uh, infrastructure transportation infrastructure and your voice is breaking is it clear is it clear now your voice is breaking please stop your video and you can proceed for the lecture okay. madam your okay. internet may be internet may be the problem please stop your video and you can proceed for the lecture your internet may be unstable the okay. audio is breaking stop your video video ah uh, stop your video that is uh, stop my stop my video is uh, and now you can proceed because uh, you can see the the, internet is, you can see ah uh, now it is okay you can see the uh, audio is you can see yes, the slides okay yes, yes audio is clear now uh, audio is clear now okay thank you so uh, the roads and environments have to built on most, some most of the times built on weak soil deposits uh, these problematic soils will have low strength uh, high compressibility poor drainage and also swelling and shrinkage characteristics are also uh, not uh, good now uh, with this uh, Uh, soft subgrade. It is possible to do a construction without losing expensive 
impossible to do a construction without losing expensive base material into the subgrade. So what are the remedial measures we will think of? Uh, the first point is we have to change the alignment. Uh, the second option is we can replace the soil. And the third one is the ground improvement methods. Now, we'll discuss more about the third uh, uh, possibility, which is uh, uh, ground improvement method. And uh, uh, when you think of the ground improvement method, the most versatile and cost effective method uh, it is the uh, geotextile, use of geotextile. In India, the natural geotextiles like fire geotextile can play a significant role because it is of low cost, eco-friendly, and suits to geotechnical applications. Uh, now, the major disadvantages of this are uh, it is uh, low of low strength and less durable. This, these are seem to be the disadvantage of this, but many cases, uh, geosynthetics are required to perform its functions in its full capacity only for a limited time. The properties are mostly surplus to the requirement. This favors the use of natural material. So what is the, uh, what prevents the use of fire geotextile? And, uh, that is the need we, if we need for, uh, we need a systematic study and uh, uh, Study of functional and strength aspects of fire geotextile when it is used for unpaved roads. So, in order to facilitate uh, this, we at QSAC are continuously doing research in this direction since 2002 in collaboration with various agencies like Fire Board, Fire Corporation, NCMRA, etc. This popularization of natural geotextile for construction of rural roads where traffic is free and low can create a boom in the fire industry in India also. So uh, we have to overcome this lack of confidence in this material and we have to go for standards, to attain standards and specifications. So the main objective of our programs, our study in this area, mainly concentrate on to study in detail the functions and mechanism of fire geotextiles while using it in subgrades. For so that, to study the strength and design parameters. Now, coming to the functions and mechanism, we have, we all of us know, you are familiar with geotextiles by now, so many lectures have already gone uh, over. Uh, so we have the functions like separation, reinforcement, and drainage. Now coming to the separation. Separation function is defined as the prevention of materials I cannot 
Madam, even though if you are not getting spotlight, so you need not worry. You can go ahead with the lecture. Not getting the spotlight, okay. but can I uh, can I get the mouse mouse? Key? Okay, okay, no problem. You can use mouse itself. Okay. The separation function is defined by preventing prevention of mixing. The mixing is due to the physical forces imposed by the construction or the operating traffic. Geotextile separators, the function of separation is to, prevent, uh, to provide a physical separation of subgrade and the base material. So it can be done during the construction or during the operation of the uh, operation life of the roadway. This mixing can take place. So the physical separation of subgrade and base material is the uh, main objective. Now coming to the second one, as the base reinforcement. So that the pressure, pressure. The, let me say the pressure of this uh, uh, aggregate or pressure on this aggregate causes the aggregate to be pushed down into the soft subgrade like this, pushed down into the soft subgrade, and the subgrade uh, or it, it is skewed subgrade to be skewed up into the base aggregate. That is the two process which are taking place here. Either the, the last material goes down under this pressure or because if the subgrade is so soft, this material can skew up and uh, make damage to the base force. So geotextile separator allows the base force aggregate to remind clean as you can visualize in this part. Now coming to the uh, base reinforcement function. The surface and base layers act together to support, to distribute the traffic load on the subgrade. When the subgrade consists of soft clay, sills and organic soils, it is unable to adequately support the traffic loads and the geotextiles are used as reinforcements. And to, uh, as a base reinforcement, these geotextiles perform in four different ways. It prevents the lateral spreading of the base and also uh, it uh, increases the confinement and the stiffness of the base and it improves the vertical stress distribution on the subgrade and it reducing the shear stress on the subgrade. So the lateral base force restraint, when you come to that, here the vehicle, vehicular loads applied to the road surface create a lateral spreading or motion of this base aggregate. A, the placement of a geotextile layer allows for shear interaction developed between the base and the geotextile, thus reducing the lateral spread. That is, the shear stress developed between the aggregate and the geotextile is a key important factor in reducing this lateral displacement. So because of this uh, lateral restraint due to the friction, the modulus of the material itself will increase. Some compaction, compactive effort will be given. So the base material becomes more stiff. Hence, uh, the when the adequate interaction develops between the aggregate and geotextile in terms of friction, 
the base material itself becomes more stiff. Due to this inherent tensile strength, that is, here you can see the, uh, the geotextile got tensed. So this wire geotextile, what will it do? The geotextile in general are uh, resistant to tension. So some tensile strength is there. So in fire also, uh, tensile strength we have. So due to this tensile strength, the fire net acts as a support membrane and reduces the localized stress due to the road surface by distributing the traffic loads like this over the, the wider area. Then uh, here also you can see the pattern of change in the shear surface when as a uh, uh, geotextile is used. See, here the load is coming and the, uh, the normal case we have the very capacity uh, shear failure pattern is here. So when uh, a geotextile is used here, this shear pattern itself will change like this. The, in, so it is it will be acting over the larger area and shear stress on the subgrade uh, will be much less. Now these, all these functions will be best performed uh, in the case of wire geotextiles also. Uh, uh, now the uh, major issue is that of the durability. Now, uh, when the uh, subgrade stiffens and becomes more stronger on consolidation within about a year normally, under the action of the granular surface and self rate of the payment or the or due to the rolling traffic loads. With time, the subgrade becomes less and less dependent on the fabric for its stability. And any degradation of the fire reinforcement later will not cause any distress on the uh, subject. Uh, now, going a little bit more about the fire and fire geotextiles. You know that fire is from this sort of golden fiber, which we got from as a gift from the mother nature. Uh, all of us know the production process is the first the extraction of fiber from coconut extraction of fiber and uh, then retting and then spinning of yarn and then weaving. These are the different process we have. And uh, it's, it is the square we can make using the yarns, we will make fire geotextiles as a as weaving process is there. So this square geotextiles is a possible substitute for geosynthetics for certain cases. I'm not telling that it is a, a clean substitute for geosynthetics. In certain cases, we can make use of this fire geotextiles. Uh, it, it is biodegradable. That's the same thing we can uh, claim as eco-friendly. Eco Both are mutually dependent. So uh, it is a, a, it's a natural product and the cost of production is also less. Coming to some of the unique advantages of this fire geotextile, these are the faster bind, bind, having the property of faster binding of the soil. That is, these are somewhat hairy and this surfaces, hairy surfaces come into contact with the soil very easily and have this binding property. Now, it is excellent air and water permeability is that, uh, and also it uh, allows uh, light, sunlight to pass through it. It holds the seeds and saplings in place, and it is excellent media for cute vegetation. All these things will we, we'll go for the cute vegetation, help the cute vegetation. Uh, 
we will see how this fifth vegetation help in our engineering that it degrades over a time period of around 2.5 to 6 yet uh, so many uh, research are going on on this um, how to you know, prevent this degradation a little bit more and it allows for deep rooting rooting of plants and provides nutrients and it is easy to install and follows the contour of the soil surface it is somewhat flexible more or less flexible so it is easy to install and follow the contour of the soil eco-friendly and non-polluting so the significant things we can put it as low cost eco-friendly and uh, it largely produced material, it's a largely produced material in India. Uh, and it is employment potential to the weaker section is very high. And it protect, it, protect, it, it, it um, use more fire fuel extracts in our uh, infrastructure constructions. We can protect the traditional fire industry also. Now let us see uh, the major fire uh, application, fire geotextile applications are the erosion control, slope protection, embankments, uh, fire geotextiles on embankment, then wasteland development, ground improvement, road underlays, etc. All this, uh, uh, from all these uh, applications will come in, in, in uh, road construction also erosion and slow highway environment roads, all this will come in our road infrastructure also. So, uh, the soil uh, bioengineering with the fire geotextile uh, finds effective application in the following soil situation. Uh, water course protection including uh, stream bank protection, shoreline stabilization, storm water channels, Stroke stabilization in railway cuttings and embankments, separation application in rural separation application in rural roads, railways, parking and storage areas, reinforcements of unpaved roads, temporary walls, etc. Provide sub-base layer in road pavement, filtration in road drains and land reclamation, agriculture and horticulture application like mulchy, anti weeds, vegetation seedling, etc. For forestry revegetation, highway cut and kill slopes, a sound barrier, that is a very important application, UV protection under earth crops, rooftop greening, mud wall reinforcement, soil stabilization, landscaping, mine site reclamation, and so many applications like this. The so widespread acceptance of fire geotextiles for use in engineering designs has led to the development of variety of geotextiles with the different engineering characteristics. Uh, we have to choose appropriate one according to our needs. The design guideline and methodology will help to select the right geofabric to meet our construction requirements. Now, coming to the different uh, uh, geo fire geotextile fabrics, uh, the mainly they are classified into uh, oven and non-oven based on the method of manufacture uh, we are doing. Now under the oven geotextile, there are fire mesh mattings of two shaft waves, fire oven fabric with loop constructions, fire bags made with latex batch fire mattings. Then fire mesh mattings of two shafts that are simplest form of fire geotextile manufactured on traditional hand looms using two shaft weaving techniques used primarily this for erosion control applications. There are uh, more than 10 varieties are available with fixed quality specifications stipulated by the Bureau of Indian Standards. The selection of which fire geotextile that depends on what is the intensity of rainfall, what's the type of soil, soil slope surface, etc. Now, uh, this uh, fire geo oven fabric with loop construction, you can see the loops here, loops construction primarily used for soil stabilization, 
This type is woven in those using technique of loop back weaving. Uh, so fire bags is another woven gel textile which is which are, which are made with uh, lactic stack fire matting used mostly to control sea erosion and as a substitute for huge uh, granite boulders which involve high labor and transportation costs we normally use for the sea con erosion control. So design, these designs are uh, made to withstand the powerful waves of, of the sea. And normally they use just bag size is six feet to four feet. Uh, this is a non-oven fire gel textile. The first one I have shown is a cocoa log. It's a very interesting uh, material product. And, uh, this is a cocoa log, is a, uh, sh it is shaped like a wooden log. Uh, the fire fiber thickly filled inside this tube shaped fire netting. It's a fire netting you can see and inside that fire fibers are filled. And the diameter of the cocoa log varies from around 15 to 50 centimeters and it comes in lengths of around two to six meters it's actually all these cocoa locks are tailor-made products you can uh, make like that and uh, the next one is a uh, wire fiber beds beds here uh, mesh mattings are stitched together to form a pouch and then filled with wire fiber the ends are stitched uh, to form the fiber beds, the thickness of which vary from 20 to 25 centimeter as per again as per our requirement. They are mainly used as wave energy dissipators. This is a picture of fire needle felt. These are pads made by interlocking fire fiber through needling. These felt pads can be used for low cost acoustic control, air and water filtration, thermal insulation, and also for soil erosion control. So this uh, picture will give you the different uh, old erosion control products together. And uh, this is uh, practical now, let us uh, move on to the field application. Uh, this reduce the this is application of a uh, geotextile again uh, it erosion control product uh, it reduce the impact of pain drops coming and uh, the that is uh, rain water is harvested here and uh, uh, it's also uh, used for rain water harvesting this is also again an uh, infeed overland water flow. Now, this is a very common use uh, fire to textiles for flow protection. Now, the uh, for the slope protection, this, uh, you can see once fire to textile is laid, the we will put seedlings and this seedling, as I said earlier, this fire geotextile is uh, uh, very useful in keeping this seedling, uh, seedlings in position and also uh, it uh, enhances the, the growth of this uh, seeds, expedite the growth, growth of the vegetation along the slopes. It will be a very, a very clean and uh, surface finally we can have. So this, these things are in general. Uh, and then uh, we can move on to the design aspects in road. Uh, the major design requirements uh, for uh, 
means uh, road construction are uh, related with the functions of geotextiles. Uh, they are, say, uh, the required property of a geotextile are tensile strength, tear resistance, burst resistance, and impact resistance. Uh, and the major functions, uh, separation, reinforcement, filtration, etc. Here in this uh, study, so we have studied all these things separately for this uh, presentation. I am focusing more on the reinforcement, its bearing capacity, reinforcement to, uh, to emphasize the reinforcement function, the bearing capacity, as well as the uh, the CBR, the enhancement in CBR is discussed. So in order to study the performance of various quiet industries in survey, experiments are conducted in the lab to determine the properties of quiet geotextiles. The functions uh, to study about the various functions uh, tests were conducted. So separation, WPM plate flow tests are conducted for reinforcement also plate flow tests and reinforcement testing and then uh, drainage for mobility characteristics are studied. Uh, coming to the design parameters, normally our both sections are designed based on uh, CBR, MCC and interfacial friction. So this is the quiet, own file geotext as used for this uh, particular investigation. That is H2M8 and H2M6 varieties are used. And these are the known uh, varieties of geotext as we use. Uh, these properties of this uh, uh, one, uh, this all this quiet geotext as H2M8, H2M6 and no one are uh, uh, tabulated and obtained in the laboratory and tabulated. And coming to the effect of fire geotextiles on wiring capacity, and so this is a published work. Um, Babu and Jaikar. Babu was a former PhD student of mine. Uh, so he has done um, most of the works I was discussing this statistics. And so I have a paper on low deformation behavior of fire geotextiles reinforced unpaved roads in Indian highways that so this is a, a test section a square footing supported by square geotextile on uh, reinforced soil in Israel and we have conducted. So this is the test setup, model test arrangement. Uh, so we conducted a uh, one meter, one meter yeah, uh, tank. Uh, where geotextiles at various positions we have conducted and we have done the experiment and uh, uh, we use an uh, MPD to uh, find in the uh, settlement and the hydraulic jack is used to apply the load over it. Uh, so the dummy nature of a uh, Both displacement curves for reinforced and unreinforced the cases are uh, considered. That is uh, settlement versus low intensity. So this is like a plate flow test. So for the unreinforced soil, you can see now it's a typical curve. Uh, normally you can see the low settlement curve like this. And for the reinforced curve, by geotextile reinforced one, you can get a stiffer curve. So we have done tests uh, uh, different uh, control sections that is dry as well as saturated conditions we have done using H2M8 and H2M6 and no more than three types of three varieties of geotext tests we have done and uh, uh, three positions of geotext tests also we have tried 0.51 and uh, 1.5 of fed by P issue. This uh, are around 20 plate flow process, which are around 20 plate flow test. And after that, we have uh, calculated. Uh, Excuse me, madam, voice is low. Kindly increase voice. 
So uh, these are the some of the test results. Here we can see the load settlement curve um, is shown. It is a case of an H2MH butane slag uh, used in dry condition. Uh, so this is a uh, this this curve shows the tank only, uh, and uh, this is this curve shows the H2MH uh, when butane slag is. Uh, Based at 0.5 times weight from the top surface. Then uh, the second one, the blue line shows when the geotextiles are placed a little bit lower. That is set by set by B is equal to one, and then H2MA is set by B is equal to 1.5 is shown like the pink color. So from this we can see that as we go uh, away from the loading platform, uh, it is uh, the effect is decreasing. Here is the case for a saturated condition. Uh, that here the effect, what we have discussed in the earlier slide, is much more in the case of saturated condition. So Z by B is equal to 0.5 and Z by B is equal to 1 is uh, giving better results. Whereas when Z by B is equal to 1.5, it is showing almost like uh, the normal saturated stack. This gives a variation of average bearing capacity with Z by B ratio. Z by B is along the X axis and uh, bearing capacity ratio along the Y axis. And here uh, we can see that H by H, the non oven dry is giving the highest bare capacity ratio. And uh, this is the second one, gives, this, this figure is for non oven saturated conditions. This is this case, the second line gives the saturated condition for H2M8, and this one is saturated condition of H, uh, H2M6 dry condition. So, uh, this is BCR, that is bearing capacity ratios we have drawn. Because the research clearly shows that uh, the Fire geotextile, a natural one, can substantially increase the bearing capacity of shallow square fittings in sand in dry and saturated condition. The capacity enhancement factor increases as the ratio Z by B decreases. A value of Z by B is equal to 0.5 and can be considered optimum for the design with fire geotextile. Of the oven fire geotextiles tested, H2M8 performs better than H2M6. Now, coming to the rut behavior of unpaved roads, uh, we have uh, done uh, several other experiments with the uh, top WBM layer. Uh, silty clay subgrade over which these are the tests done, uh, a control section with the silty clay subgrade over which 150 m of thick WBM layer is placed. 
another uh, red soil is tried with the 75 mm thick WPM layer. This this 75 and 50 mm based on the design of uh, subgrade CBR. Design based on subgrade CBR. Since this red soil is having no CBR, the thickness be put in the 75 mm. Then coming to the sections with coil geotextile, the silty subgrade, uh, silty clay subgrade, uh, we use coil geotextile at subgrade subface interface and the red soil subgrade uh, also we put it as in the interface. Then we tried uh, two layers of uh, coil geotextiles also. So this is the uh, rut, wave, rut behavior we got it. Um, WPM control section. Uh, this is the control section with uh, no noven prior geotextile. We have with no noven prior geotextile and with the H2M8 uh, prior geotextile, we have this one and uh, H2M6 we have. Now, WBM control section, this is for a uh, uh, behavior of a uh, silty clay. Control section is uh, this one. Uh, no, no, it's with the oven geotextile uh, here. And this is for no oven geotextile. This gives a comparison of oven and no oven geotextile. Here, the no oven geotextile gives better results. Now we move on to the uh, two layer system. The percentage increase in carrying capacity when an additional layer is put within the sub uh, within the sub base, uh, an increase of non uh, increase of 11 percentage is obtained with a non oven and uh, 15 percentage obtained with a H2 emission units. Now uh, for the rut behavior, this all these uh, studies we have uh, done with the static loading. Now under the traffic loading, how the uh, uh, geotextile behaves. For that, uh, we got a, a project from Fibot of India, and uh, um, based on that, we have done some experiments. And uh, this is a wind track testing facility we developed. And this is the uh, uh, locations of uh, this shows the locations of uh, settlements and all these points we obtained. Within the track. So, uh, in a nutshell, this is the result for a different number of passes, uh, how the settlement increases. You can see the gradual increase in settlement as number of passes increases. So, the last one is I mean, 17, 15, 50 passes, uh, the rut formed. You can see the difference from 50,500 passes and 1750 passes. That means at this stage, the soil is about to fail. So this is uh, uh, the uh, transverse radiation of uh, uh, rut during the transport. Uh, so uh, this is the control section. This control section. And uh, this, uh, this one, the, the white, this one is the, the this is the uh, rut of the control section. When a coil geotextile is H2M8 is put, this is the rut we have obtained. And we have tried with the H2M6 also and also with the no oven geotextile. Here also, the no oven geotextiles are slightly better we can somewhat the same as h 2 m a slight variation you can say so uh, here also the moment the design of h 2 m a will give you better results than h 2 m this figure shows the uh, as, as number of passes increases uh, how we about the factor increases. This is uh, for the this is at the second location state. Right? So this is the control section H2 uh, M6 here 
and the moment here and s2 m so s2 m6 and s2 m8 is steering almost I and mean, s2 m8 and the mono one is steering almost the same uh, but the number of passes are nearly thousand now for the uh, purpose of uh, design uh, normally as we know that for the uh, you know, pavement design we go for the PDR value the strength behavior of the design in, uh, in, uh, is assessed in terms of PDR here uh, we have uh, the reference we have uh, paper uh, again uh, estimation of fire texture reinforced and the plate that is uh, in uh, the uh, Highway Research Journal in July 2011. Here, the, around the two uh, series of tests again we have conducted. One is for uh, soap and the other is for uh, unsoap condition. Uh, around uh, the first series, uh, excuse me, madam. Please increase your volume. Problem here. Uh, uh, in, uh, okay. Slides, slides are uh, visible. Slides. Are visible. Slides are visible. Volume is uh, low. So you can. Okay. Okay. Now it is working. Okay. okay. Around, around twenty-eight tests uh, has done in the series one and twelve tests in series two. Uh, the, here, the series one. Fire gear textile are placed at uh, uh, H by two, H by three, and H by four. Uh, and that is at different levels. Uh, here in this one, we used only the subgrade, uh, no water bond method. In the second series of tests, we used the surfacing also, water bond method of surfacing also we tried. So this, these are the results. Yeah. So same test setup here. Uh, in one case, this is CBR test. CBR test. One case we put uh, geotextile here, and the uh, other case. This is full of soil. The other second case, we have water bomb uh, macadam over the geotech side. So, this is the variation in red soil aggregate system with the geotech side. This is a soaked condition. With H2MA, we've got 56 percentage. No, no, when 85 percentage improvement in soap the system we got. In unsoap the system, uh, H2M8 is performing well than the no, no, when. So, this uh, no, no, when geotextiles can hold more water. Maybe that is a uh, reason for this. And uh, this is a clay aggregate uh, system uh, in which uh, soap the CPR gives around. 97 percentage increase and this is around 70 percentage increase for the H2MA condition. So in the unsolved condition, whereas increase is 21 percentage and 69 percent. Now uh, coming to the position of uh, geotextile, so uh, no geotextile here and this is by on h H by 2, that is the center, and this is at H by 3, and this is at H by 4, that is from the top surface, H by 4 depth, geotextiles are placed. So, as we said earlier, as we uh, put the geotextile nearer to the loading surface, the improvement will be more. Then this is uh, uh, in the case of the red soil, the same thing in the case of the red soil. Now coming to the design methods, the IRC uh, 
other is followed based on uh, CBR, subgrade CBR. Now, the design curves are available for different cumulative traffic flows at stages and stage. Then we can get the modified CBR for the subgrade soil required to get that, and the thickness can be obtained from the charts or plates available. This, uh, this again, Professor Paper, uh, the design of quality of the scale rate was proposed using IRC method in Highway Research Journal, a special issue in 2008. So based on the uh, data, uh, that is experimental data we got, um, we arrived at uh, a regression analysis and arrived at a CBR modified value uh, with the parameters initial CBR X1 and the weight per meter square of the geotextile, GSM of the geotextile, and the depth of the geotextile from the top as X3 and the thickness of the geotextile as X4, at 2 kPa as X4. So we got this equation with a, uh, with a R value of 0.938. So this is a modified CBR method by US Army of Spino. We calculate the thickness of the base coast uh, using this equation. Aggregate thickness is calculated for the different traffic coverages at equal and single wheel road. Uh, A is the tire contact area. Uh, based on that equation, we have calculated the thickness with the different number of for different number of passes you know, for the EA, USA CA method. So modify the CBR values. If you have modified CBR value, we can directly uh, get uh, the thickness of the field. Now the design procedure. Uh, here is determine the aggregate thickness H0 for the base course that is unreinforced condition, taking traffic into account in terms of wheel passes from the design curves H0 versus CBR. That is for a, this, uh, for a CBR value, for a given CBR value, uh, for a different num wheel load passes, we can directly get H0, that is unreinforced thickness for a payment, the thickness for an unreinforced payment. Now, as a step two, determine the reduction in aggregate thickness delta H resulting from the use of quadratic set by quasi-static analysis from the same curves delta H versus CBR. So, this curves gives delta H versus CBR. For different uh, stiffness of the soil we have obtained. And from that, as a step three, the required thickness of the aggregate in base course for the reinforced condition is obtained as H minus H is equal to H, H naught, that is unreinforced thickness minus delta H, the reduction in thickness obtained due to the provision of quadratic extra. This is the design procedure we suggested uh, in uh, this. Uh, now, the, by making use of the design curves required, the thickness of the unpaved roads can be easily found out. There are also the type of fire geotestates can be selected based on uh, the type of soil, in general, it was found that by using fire geotextile, the aggregate thickness can be reduced and the reduction depends upon the quality of the fire geotextile, properties of the soil, and the placement depth of the reinforcement. So summing up, it can be concluded that biogeotic still can fulfill the functions as separator, reinforcement, and thus can be effectively utilized for the construction of unpaved roads and also in embankments. 
uh, here, here with the other functions are also we have checked, but for due to the time limitations, we are not going into that. Now, coming to the field construction, uh, these are the different uh, steps we can normally follow. The first, uh, we prepare the ground by removing chunks, boulders, and so forth. Fill in uh, uh, those spots are there. We, anyway, we make a level surface. Then, unroll the geotextile directly over the ground to be stabilized. If more than one roll width is required, overlap the roll uh, and uh, we have to inspect the geotextiles for uh, whether there is no holding is there, it should be stretched well. Uh, then, uh, over that, dump aggregates. Um, do not provide, um, do not drive directly on the geotextile. Maintain at least 10, 6 to 12 inches cover between the truck tires and the geotextile. That is, we, after putting the geotextile, first we have to put the uh, aggregate and over that you roll on it. Don't roll on the geotextile directly. Then spread the aggregate over the geotextile into the design thickness. Then compact the aggregate using reversers or vibratory rollers. So these are the uh, different procedures. Now let us move on to some uh, field trials we have done. And uh, this is a, a case uh, uh, jointly done by the Fireboard of India and the Research Ministry of Science and Technology. This is a standing group for some two. In a place like Tanya uh, Mukha. Uh, so uh, it's a fire property in which uh, there is some water bodies there and there is some uh, interest. Uh, this is the procession. Uh, these are the, some of the photographs that boats are laid. First, as I said, uh, to hold the geotextile in position, we will first make a small trench. Uh, on the sides of the food uh, surface, and in that we put geotextile, and we will uh, uh, keep the geotextile running into the uh, trunch, and there will be some overlaps also. Then that trunch is filled with the soil. As we uh, do the construction, you can see. The different uh, um, layers of your textiles we have put folded one over the other. This is the final layer. We are folding back this geotextile. So the finished surface. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know this uh, uh, nearly 18 years past. Uh, still, this road is. In a very good condition. Now, uh, in the case of a 1.4 kilometers, this was a very small range actually, less than a kilometer. Uh, this is a, a 1.4 kilometer long palm road uh, in Shangaram Vadashedra, Kuravu in Kerala. Uh, it, is, it is done in 2006. Uh, this is reported as a case study on application of fire for soil stabilization. The 7th International Conference on Case Studies, Chicago, USA, in 2013. So, this is a uh, where we have done the activity. This is an idea of the area before we are playing the fire test. So, the site preparation is over with the trees, shrubs, stumps, etc., uh, develop the major animals. And after that, they have put uh, some loads of header uh, um, also over it. And the bed is prepared for laying the geotextile. Here, uh, one side is a parashagara, and the other side is a fishing. Uh, 
Polizeizeit. Ja, See the slushy soil. The biogeotech stands in rows are on the side. It's actually a road and um, along with the Kerala Land Development Corporation, they have uh, done this work. And uh, we, are, we are the consultants for that. Biogeotech stands are not. You can see the knee, bamboo knee, especially knee for this, uh, kneeling down the soil this guys into the ground. And uh, this is how the installation process proceeds. Unroll the geotextile and cut into the uh, required size. And the geotextiles are directly placed over the prepared ground. You may note that this is not laying along the length, it is crosswise, it is. So, different sections are cut and a small overlap is here, here, on one the other is placed and at the soil is placed. And as you can see, it's, uh, uh, this is for Wrap around, overlap to wrap. So this, you can see the curved surface also. There is a curve alignment. So we can see how that the square geotextiles suits well for the fire alignment or I mean, uh, curved alignment also. So these are the two well proven sites using fire geotextile where the, there are there is much adverse conditions like water bodies on both sides you can see along that we have provided the environment now what's the future the, so the fire has tremendous potential in india as well as the world over for eco-friendly applications being the Major producer, India should make more efforts on research and development. So there is a need for documentation and creation of database on experience and field trials. Which are already doing now. So it could lead to the development of relevant standards in the country. A sustained effort would have to be made in the fire sector as in the case of synthetic polymer products, which have been evolved by the industry after decades of trials and experiments. It's a substantial investment for making an impact in the geotextile market. So being a novel product, the Indian fire industry efforts are to be made to explore new fields of application. There is need for a group of marketing personnel with the adequate technical knowledge for popularization of fire geotextile in a very competitive market environment. Interactions with concerned decisions making government departments, uh, establishment like irrigation boards, highway portals, etc., uh, railways, and uh, all these interactions we have to do. And uh, I am sure there will be. Uh, much scope for this product and other product. So we with a view to impress upon them with all these uh, stakeholders. Uh, the suitability project is a permanent eco-friendly solution to application in road and other civil engineering problems. Sir uh, um, Ramrao, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, Madam sir. Weiss is breaking. Excuse me, Madam, why is breaking? So, uh, is there any? It's, I am I'm speaking through the mic, uh, for earphone mic. Okay. What's so the time, time limit allotted? Okay, okay. We can, we can continue, Madam. So, so nobody is okay. We can continue. So, shall I, uh, shall I wind up? 
Oh, okay. Okay. So these are the uh, some of the uh, points which I would like to share with you, and uh, we have to do the all this uh, research. I got uh, assistance from so many persons, um, teachers. Say thanks to my teachers, the scholars, students, fellow members of the faculty. And uh, laboratory technicians of the School of Engineering Research, and uh, mainly the Fireboard Government of India and Kerala for the for their financial support, and also from National Fire Research Management Institute. From there also we have a project, and the universities of the universities of the and uh, uh, special thanks I would like to express to my former research scholar Dr. K K Babu. He meticulously carried out all the laboratory studies, and I wish to dedicate this uh, presentation uh, to Lich Professor T S Ramna Thaya, former B T A and District Officer of I T Madhya, who introduced to me this uh, ancient world of uh, fire geotextile around 30 years ago uh, during my postgraduate studies. So, thank you one and all for the, the patient hearing. If you have any queries, we will discuss. Thank you, madam. I will try, try to answer the queries if there is any. Thank you, madam. So, before question answer session, so I will share a Google Form link. Madam, you can stop your share. And you can start your video also. So I will share Google Form link. All the participants copy things. Pardon? Uh, I will share Google Form link, madam, in the chat section for the participants. So wait. So I request all the participants to stop your video and copy this Google Form link and its purpose is sharing uh, PDF content of this lecture and your feedback and we are sharing PDF content and videos not only for this lecture, even for earlier lectures also. Entire thing with a Google folder, it is a Google Drive link. So it contains all the webinars in PDF and MP4, so far we had organized. And you can share that to your uh, friends, colleagues, and also uh, others also. So uh, now you can send your questions through chat. Madam, you can observe the questions. Madam? Yeah. Uh, you can observe the questions in the chat box. Okay. ஜிஎஸ்எம் that is gram per square feet how what is the weight depending on the weight it is uh, designated it's a uh, uh, you know the work is uh, is uh, one of the pioneer uh, earlier work in 2002 so uh, we use here yeah, we were forced to use that in the case now can we recommend fire gear to stay for stabilization pavement layers when we have designed like more than 5 6 years question is related to biodegradability of fire definitely because as i said uh, as uh, time passes uh, because of the action of the uh, vehicle uh, and the cell fate of the uh, environment the the, the subgrade below that is soil below 
gets consolidated and become more and more strong over the years and it won't be uh, the, the soil won't be uh, not depending on the choir geotextile uh, that is one thing uh, then even though the the second point i i have to say is even though the um, choir geotextile degrades uh, the choir fibers will be there within the soil mass uh, in associated with this uh, study, uh, we have done uh, some uh, lot of tests regarding the uh, effect of choir fiber in the uh, soil. So that shows that even if it is not in the form of choir geotextile, in the form of choir fiber, this that will give more strength to the subject. I hope. Uh, I explained it. Now, uh, come from uh, Dola, the case is of coastal road, which uh, typically also faces slow produce, erosion. What is your experience with using biogeotest with the vegetation for slow erosion and road in saline environment? What kind of vegetation do you recommend in salt water and Okay, that. Uh, 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 Chola, Adola, that uh, I, I, I have not uh, shown a project uh, in the coastal area. It is uh, uh, in a paddy field area, not a coastal area. Uh, in the one side, it is a uh, uh, paddy field, uh, and the uh, other side, it is a uh, fish breeding area. Uh, so, uh, water is there, but it, is, it was not saline water. Um, Still, uh, for the for the saline water uh, environment, there are the, the agricultural university. Uh, uh, they have developed uh, uh, so many uh, relative uh, works uh, that is uh, biogeotextile. What what are the different uh, uh, plant seeds? What are the Hello. Hello. Madam, you can continue. Screen Hello. So, okay, screen is clear. Okay. okay, okay. You can continue, madam. It is the voice is clear. Uh, now it is uh, from my screen. It's everything is blank. So I I, I lost the chat box also. Chat box also. Uh, I will read, madam. You can. So I, there have is to, even... I, I have to re-enter? No, 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 no. I will read. You can uh, uh, try to give the answers, madam. I will read the chat box. Okay. So, uh, ma'am, what is the cost effective percentage compared to other materials in applications? Yeah. So, uh, especially the bond sloping applications. Like that. Yeah, it's very cost effective. Uh, Just a minute, let me let me re-enter it then. So uh, for the participants I have shared link, it contains all the Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, one minute, madam, just hold on. So I, for the participants I have shared link, the link contains so all the webinars in PDF and MP4, I request all the parts of this also. Okay, madam, continue. So, uh, so have you get chat, madam? I can get, I can get the chat. Okay. Uh, so uh, regarding the uh, slope erosion control in saline environment, uh, there are different uh, species they develop in agricultural university uh, uh, with respect to different uh, um, soil nature. So we can select from that, no problem. Then, Kartikeyan, uh, uh, and we apply choir geotextile for conducting retained wall for well, if possible, kindly share it. 
Okay, sure. We have done some experiments on uh, retaining walls also. We have uh, tried. For retaining walls also, we can uh, uh, use this. You, uh, at the same time, you, you see, uh, when I, when I uh, show the first case study, the soil is retained in that it is something like a retaining wall, even though the, uh, the height is not so much. Uh, it is around uh, uh, less than three meter height, I think. Uh, so uh, we can use this thing for uh, retaining walls also. Then what is the cost effective percentage? Yeah. Uh, that uh, the cost depends on what type of uh, reinforcement you are using. Uh, and uh, uh, in which, uh, which type of soil you are using. And uh, you have to compare this to the other case also, the geotextile cost also, uh, you, know, you should know. Uh, only one sloping application. Yeah, sloping application is the most effective one because uh, uh, we, we can have uh, greenery vegetation along the slopes. Uh, so, uh, it is very widely used for. Codal protrusion for use of fire, like I said. That we are, uh, we are um, uh, continuous efforts are uh, uh, running for that. Uh, we are in, at some percentage, we have uh, succeed also. In some of the uh, area, we, we, we locally, we can uh, put it in our local PWD. Some for uh, some applications, uh, we, we we put put it. Okay, which please unmute and I'm trying to talk. So what should we do? Secretary Koyapu is writing. Sir, hello, hello. Hello. Try to do the answers. Yeah, so, hello. Uh, hello, Secret Secretary Choir Board uh, wants to talk. This comment is okay. there. Okay. So, so what should uh, I do? In the chat box, you can type his name so that I will make uh, unmute him. Please type the. Yeah, Secretary, Secretary Choir Board. That is his name. Secretary is, Yeah. Secretary okay. 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 Just uh, so I, thank you. Yeah, I got it now. Uh, okay. uh, really thankful to the organizers. It's a much, very much useful. And we are sincerely thanking our Dr. Bina, madam, uh, because very long associations we are having there with the geofire, geotextiles. And I would like to give two items. That is now Ministry of Rural Development uh, Government of India has made it as a mandatory in seven states that 5% of the rural road has to be constructed through co using Kayar geotextile. This is one of the success for the Dr. Bina, Madam Kusat, and uh, wherever NITs, all the people they are joined together, they have made this effort. And really, it is one of the best achievement. And now, uh, the second thing is uh, we formulated a uh, center of Excellence, especially for the higher geotextiles and higher industry in IIT Chennai, where in the advisory panel, Dr. Bina, Madam, NIT, Mr. Samson Matthew, and uh, NCMRI Anil, who are all associated with the geotextiles also there. So the expert panel can be utilized by all the viewers. Uh, wherever you are getting any type of a question, struck, etc., easily you can contact the Center of Excellence through any of your resources and through Kyre board also. Third thing, Kyre board is having a champion's desk control room. 24 hours it is open and you can post any requirement of Kyre Geotexel. We have opened a cell in Central Kyre Research Institute to give all kinds of support on the Kyre Geotexel and its applications to the industry as well as departments. So any kind of material requirements, specifications, testing, all those parameters, it can be well used and this is my information to all the viewers, as well as once again, I am thanking Dr. Pina, Madam. Uh, madam, your lectures and all, it require a half a day, not like one hour. And thanks for the organizers, Thank perhaps Cochin University is doing this uh, 
It's one of the excellent programs. Sir, continue the learning session only. The lockdown period, we can learn a lot of knowledge. And nearly about all of us, Purti clusters, higher industries, association presidents are already there in the uh, video conference. They are all listening. Uh, thanks once again to all them. And our control room uh, uh, email ID, just you can send the email ID, any grievance, suggestions, any of your requirement, 24 hours it is. Champions, C-H-A-M-P-I-O-N-S. Champions at kairbot.org. This is the mail ID. You can post any of our requirement about the Kair industry, Kair geotextiles, anything. And within 20, within two days, everything, you will get all the reply, everything. And also, we have a um, uh, uh, phone number also 0484237 This is the number you can give uh, 8 to uh, morning 8 to night uh, 8 p.m. The cell is functioning. You can give a call in for uh, any of your requirement or 24 hours mail is open. You can post it. Thank you, Bina, Madam. Thank, Thank you, you organizers. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, uh, the information you have passed on to the audience. Um, it's, uh, uh, it is untiring work from your part also to uh, get this approved. I know uh, what are the uh, difficulties we have faced for this. Anyway, congratulations to you also. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. Then uh, uh, coming back to the chat box, what is the effective life of fire? The effective life of fire uh, actually uh, that depends on the condition on which it is uh, uh, laid on. The, um, it is uh, if it is uh, alternative wetting and drying process is not there, the life of the fire will be much more than what we usually say of five to six years. Uh, but it is it will be much more uh, if there is no alternative wetting and drying processes. There. Okay, the second one, uh, the another question is, is it recommended to conduct laboratory studies on geotester on smaller scale using CBR apparatus? Uh, some of the uh, test results are what I have shown is on CBR apparatus only. That is the, the second part, uh, just on CBR apparatus only uh, we have done. We have done with this upgrade alone and also uh, with the uh, waterbound macadam overage. Both we have done. Then, um, so, Kumar Raja sir, phone number and email ID is once again asked. We will, we will share that. So, madam, I think there is no further questions. So, uh, if there is no further question, we will end this okay. session. So, okay, so, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for the excellent uh, world of uh, Kaya geotextiles. So, thank you. Thank you, thank sir, you, one and all participants. Opportunity. Thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, one and all.